Hello, welcome to No Apologies on Beck, where we are unafraid to speak the truth. I'm your host, Rick Becker, our co-host, Lori Hintz. I am here. I am present and accounted for. Feeling feisty. I'm feisty. Uh -oh. Feisty. Oh, y'all should worry about that oh, a little bit. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it toned down because we have a guest, Lynn Bowie. Yes. Is uh, representative Luke, Luke Simon's attorney. He's going to be with us shortly. So you want to hang around for that? Just saying. Yep. So I'm gonna keep myself chill. Okay. So what are we starting out with today? Um, let's start off with some resolutions that we had in the house today. Okay. Um, we had several. And these resolutions were all with regard to um, constitutional amendments. Okay. So again, the way it works is people can gather signatures and then something will go on the ballot to change the constitution if the people vote for it. Or the legislature can vote for something to put it on the ballot and the people vote for it. Um, so one is an initiated measure and the other one is just a resolution that goes to yeah, a measure. Like a, legislative, a measure vote. Right, exactly. So the first one, let's bring it up. It's resolution 3040. And this one is a, um, a bill of mine and mm -hmm. it's the only one that passed out of this group. And so people need to take note that um, the rest of them that we're gonna talk about are, are for your interest. But they did not pass, they're not going over to the Senate, they're dead. But you should know about them, should know we voted on them. Um, but this first one, uh, uh, HCR 3040, it says a tax may not be imposed or levied and the effective tax rate of any tax levied may not be increased except pursuant to an act of the Legislative Assembly approved by a vote of two-thirds of the members elected to each house. So. Pretty straightforward there. Yeah, what that means is that we as the legislature cannot increase your taxes or institute new taxes unless we have two-thirds, 67%. Right now it's just 50% plus one person. So it's much easier to raise your taxes. There are 15 states in the United States that have some elevated level. There's like five that have 60%, seven that have 67%, and three actually that have 75%. Wow. Yeah. And then there's Colorado that requires that it goes, once they approve it, it has to go to the voters to still approve their own tax increase. So um, It is a good idea though, wouldn't you think, to make it difficult to amend well, sure. the Constitution? It makes right. perfect sense to me. So. Right. As I said on the floor today, you know, we in this body have not wanted to increase taxes, at least as long as I've been there, since 2013. But we don't know what this body makeup is going to be in the future, so why not take advantage now when we have this this awareness that it's it should be difficult. It mm -hmm. should be... if. Absolutely, if necessary, that's it. And so uh, it passed with a vote of 55 to 34, and it's going to go it to the did. Senate. Yes, I d I'm kind of surprised by that. Well, Color me surprised, just simply because you kind of gave me the impression that you didn't think that was going anywhere. Well, as I mentioned, all of these failed except for that one. Okay. So. Um, I'm well, happy. I thought you thought all of them were going to well, fail. I thought there was a good chance of that. Yes, I'll, <laughs> so, I'll admit to that. Well, that's a win. Okay, next one is uh, House Concurrent Resolution 3038. Um, this one is another one of mine, and this eliminates property tax. Ah, yes. And um, uh, let the, the, basically that's it. And we've covered this before, I think. Um, but it went down in flames. It uh, <laughs> actually... <laughs> that doesn't sound very good. <laughs> well, it, got, it got 27 yes votes and 63 no votes. Hmm. So... Um, you know, that, that, that's about what I expected, That's frankly. a little thumping. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, which is unfortunate, folks. We could be eliminating your property tax, Just and I showed on the, house, on the House floor um, that chart and it, it, that we, we showed in this uh, program last week, um, and I even adjusted it because I realized that it wasn't even as bad as what I had shown on the graph, so I got a new graph and mm -hmm. all that, but it didn't pass. It did not pass, okay. so you're stuck with property taxes unless someone wants to get signatures together. Next one is House Concurrent Resolution 3041. This is another property tax bill. This one, so th it followed that, okay, the House voted against and completely eliminating property tax. Mm -hmm. So Representative Ertelt had one that would eliminate property tax for residential property. Give everyone ah. a tax break. And even if you, uh, there was a, a workaround for people that are renting, you know, so that uh, if people are using it as a primary residence, the landlord can get the tax break and pass it down in decreased rent to the people. So um, Was this a closer vote at least, I hope? No, it was less close. <laughs> oh, no. This one <laughs> uh, was a vote of 25 to 65. Oh, my. So um, you're still stuck with property taxes. 
still stuck with property taxes. Number one, the number one most hated thing uh, by North Dakotans. Yes. And um, we just can't, we just can't get rid of them. Do, do you think the people that were just too apathetic about it and we're not being as aggressive about like the masks and the other things where everybody's emailing the legislators or it, what's the problem? What's uh, the problem? Is it know. apathy? Are we just apathetic? I don't know about that. Because I, I know the, that we're unhappy about it. Well, yes, but the problem is it came to a vote of the people in 2012. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that was 10 years ago, still, nearly. Almost, right. Um, but it still recollected that the people had an option, and they passed it. Now, the problem is they voted it down based on a very well-funded campaign of fear and that misinformation. That happens a lot in this state. The people toss yeah. gobs of money into something, and then... Oh, yes, that yeah. does happen a lot. It kind of A lot, does. a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, next, let's go to House Concurrent Resolution 3036. Okay. This is an interesting one. We're getting off of property tax now. This one would have put term limits on the legislature of 16 years. Which seems reasonable. That's a lot of years. How many, I mean, yep. if you're going every four years, I mean, that's four terms. Right, exactly. <laughs> I'm doing the math, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm um, like, that's four terms. Now, four terms is so a lot of the terms. People, the people seem to definitely want term limits. Mm -hmm. I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan. I voted for it, but, it, but I'll be honest, it was, I was a little iffy. Because there, and there's, well, as you have said, with your vote, it's a term limit. Right. You can vote anybody out if at any like time, person, and that's a term limit. Kick them out. So right. I could have gone either way. Um, I did vote yes for it. Um, but this one really died. But Representative Magram essentially gave a classroom instruction on the floor of the House on what to say and do if you want your bill to be killed. So sorry, Jeff. <laughs> I you love did, Jeff man. Magram. Why did I, oh. <laughs> In what way it did was a doozy. really? <laughs> it was a doozy. If I you should want, not laugh. That's not even funny. That's wanna, not nice. If you want to see it, come watch the video on okay. legist.nd.gov. Oh. On uh, House Concurrent Re Resolution 3036. Um, so he made a couple of errors in how well, he presented it? Or? I, not error. I, he, he was, the path he chose to go was destined to <laughs> clear the path of people who would have considered voting for it. Okay. So this had... <laughs> and now I have to go back and watch the video, this, so that's good. <laughs> this died with a vote of 12 to 78. Ouch! 12 to 78. Owie. Yeah. So term limits, I know folks, a lot of you folks are in favor of that. Oh, let's go one more graphic on this same bill because it wasn't just legislators. Um, this also was for the governor. And it was eight years as governor. And um, this one, this one I'm less ambivalent. I mean, I'm okay with this one even more because the closer you get to the people, the less I'm worried about term limits. Correct. Um, and the farther you get away from the people, the more I think an argument for term limits is okay. Uh, so the, the governor would have been limited to an eight-year term as it stands now. A lot of people think we are yeah, two terms, at a limit. But, but, but you're not. No. Hoven had, you know, 10 years. He bumped out in the middle of his third term. Right, right. Um, but anyway, failed miserably. All right. Next one is 3042, House Concurrent Resolution 3042. Um, and what this one is, a little bit different. And a political subdivision may not levy assessments or impose fees, taxes, tolls, charges, or required contributions unless the members of the governing body of the political subdivision are elected or are appointed to fill a vacant elected position. So that is a kind of a lengthy, wordy way of, <laughs> of just saying that nobody can raise your taxes or, or your fees unless they've been elected. Because there are there are bureaucratic bodies. things. Yeah. There are water boards and there are you know different boards that can do that. Raise fees, raise um, taxes, and that is troublesome since they are not elected. Right, mm -hmm. and so this would have this wouldn't have changed a lot. It simply would have been that say the water board would have had to request that the say county commission mm -hmm. would have raised the fee or what have you. Right. Because then they're at least still the the, the county commission, the city commission, whatever it might be. Are held accountable. And they're elected by the voters, whereas uh, appointed boards are not. Correct. Um, this one I thought was, you know, not unreasonable, mm -hmm. but it failed. It did. Thirty-one to fifty-nine. Well, that is a little closer. A little closer, but <laughs> but let's rejoice. Let's rejoice in the two-thirds vote for uh, HCR three zero four zero that passed fifty-five to thirty-four. Yay.
Next up, folks, we're going to bring Lynn Bouye in, and uh, we're going to talk about the Luke Simons case in some detail. Stick with us. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments. So you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. Pub 21, your one stop for fun, drinks, and food. Our spacious facility provides COVID safe fun for you and all your friends. With nightly bingo and specials, you can be sure there's something to do for everyone. If you're staying in for the night, we've got you covered just across the way with Pub 21 Liquor. We have a wide variety of options, from wine to whiskey and everything in between. Stop in today at 1014 South 12th Street in Bismarck to see what all the buzz is about. You won't be disappointed. All right, we are back, uh, no apologies on Beck, and uh, we're very happy to have Mr. Lynn Bowie with us. Uh, Lynn is the attorney for former representative Luke Simons, and uh, we're gonna be going through different aspects of what's going on. There was a, uh, a uh, presser today, press conference today. I, I was not able to watch it. Laura, you said you watched watch it. it. Yes. I got to watch a portion of it anyway. Mm -hmm. The last part of it was great. So well, Lynn, you. thank you very much for joining us, and uh, there's so much to, talk about and there's so many different aspects of where this has maybe not been handled properly in, in my opinion and um, so first off if you can give us maybe an overview of what was discussed today at the press conference. Very good. Well today we had a press conference for Luke to be heard finally and what occurred is uh, we went over first the, uh, the legislative policy relating to harassment, which they had adopted and didn't follow. Then we went over the Legislative Council's policy, which they adopted and didn't follow. And then we, all, we allowed to go through every single one of the allegations that were raised against Luke last week. And he really didn't have an opportunity to respond at that time. Uh, I think they violated his due process rights left and right. We'll go into that later if you like. But the bottom line is, is Luke responded to every allegation and then presented himself to the press and said, you can ask me any questions you want on every one of these allegations and I'll answer them. 
And so he basically had a chance today, today to state what he would have told a neutral investigator had one been appointed, like the Legislative Council should have done with their policy, or the board or a independent investigator that the legislature, following its policy, should have done. They didn't do those things. So he basically had, in a sense, finally a day of his making his chance to present uh, and, and to present himself to all these reporters saying, Ask me whatever you want. I have nothing to hide. I'll, I'll mm -hmm. go over everything, every single allegation. And that's what happened today. And was he asked a lot of questions? A lot of questions, but most of them about policy, not so much about the allegations. Really? It's uh, just interesting, isn't it? It I was that rather, same thing that they were yeah. willing to attack. Mm -hmm. And I wonder, uh, when we went through each of the various allegations, uh, I did it also with the uh, statute or the policy for ha harassment, and it's defined. Right. And we went through every one, he said, well, that doesn't fit, this one doesn't fit, uh, none of them fit, and we, we said there was one allegation that could potentially be considered uh, harassment uh, as the statute's defined, only one. Mm -hmm. And that was the allegation which he denies totally, which is where he said it was alleged that he went behind and gave mm -hmm. somebody a back rub, yep. and that indeed, would be harassment if it happened, but it didn't happen, he's, and he was glad to answer any questions. Right. Yes, I, um, now, just for our audience, uh, I, Lynn and I have not conversed um, about tonight or, or pulled stuff together. We may have some overlap. I made some graphics, but, but we know the material is the sure. same material, and we're looking at it, um, uh, although for, with two sets of eyes or with Three sets of eyes, Lori. I know you've been looking at it <laughs> yes, too. I have. But you know, there's always different ways to look at it. But I, I want to make, I want to make one thing clear. Maybe make a correction. Um, I had Joel Heitkamp on the other night, and we were talking about, and I was talking about the process and this and that. And Joel wanted to keep trying to kind of stick with the, the bullet points of the Me Too movement and all mm -hmm. of that. And at one point, he asked uh, to try. It was kind of a gotcha. Do I think he is guilty of sexual harassment? And I said no, but. If we're talking uh, hostile workplace or something like that, possibly would need to look. But I looked and in, in, in reread the uh, workplace harassment policy. Mm -hmm. And in the definitions, it defines sexual harassment and it defines workplace harassment. And none of those, except the one you mentioned of the rubbing the shoulders. That's now, that one, see, most of the other ones I see in there. Um, at least the beginnings of a truthful statement, mm -hmm. because Luke says what he says, you know, and he ta and he likes to make analogies sure. uh, between people and animals, regardless of the gender of the person. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it it is what it is. Luke is Luke, but none of those fall into the harassment at all. And uh, I also um, tend to very strongly believe Luke never. Uh, I, I've never seen him touch a woman. I haven't either. And that was the other thing I was going to say. As a woman who has known him, has you know been around him, I can't even wrap my head around him even doing such a thing because that is completely yeah. out of character. Yeah. Absolutely out of character for this man, if you know him yeah. at all. And I think that's one of the reasons we had over 50 people in the uh, room today. Oh, you did? We had probably maybe uh, six or seven uh, reporters and then 50 or so people who came from his home district to basically uh, attest that this isn't, you know, Luke would not have done this. And so he has a very broad ranging su support. He has a great deal of support. He, he does. 36. And he does because they know him personally. And I even suggested to the press today, I said, you know, these legislators who took these allegations, bald faced allegations that were not provided to him ahead of time, mm -hmm. that, were, that were redacted, no names, he had, they didn't give it to him as any type of charges, they just said, we're going to have a hearing on this, we're going to spend an hour, and what did they do in that hour? They said, first, we're not going to allow any witnesses, not any experts, not going to allow his lawyer to testify or to even to talk in his defense. Said, we're just going to have legislators. And what did those legislators do in the first hour? They read every single one of the allegations as if they were true mm -hmm. and got the testimony in that way. So the, the due process is none whatsoever. Yep. And of course, we can get into the law part, but, yep. but I think everybody would consider that unfair. And by the way, as far as I'm concerned, um, even the Democrats should have been against this process. We spend so much time in both parties describing that we should have rights, yes. uh, all that. Now, 
get to the Me Too thing, which you just mentioned, there's two sides of that coin. The first side is, of course, we should allow that person to be heard. And they should be heard with dignity and without, um, you know, being placed in a position where uh, it is in any way unfair. But or the under other arrest of some sort, right? right? But the other side of the coin is yes, they're to be heard, but so is the person who's being accused, and it has to be done in a method that is fair. And had the legislature or the legislative council followed their own their own rules, there would have been an independent investigator appointed. That person would have been able to look into it, talk to every one of the people who made these allegations, talk to Luke, figure it out, keep it confidential. The Correct. reason this ended up being non-confidential and a big mess is they didn't follow their procedures. They had, to, they had it all set up. If they would have just followed the procedures, uh, the people would have been interviewed. Luke would have had an opportunity to respond. They would have, that person who did the investigation whether it's the board of five or they, an investigator they appointed, that person would came in, said, here's my decision as to what I think. Good. Let's pull up uh, the graphic, one of the graphics okay. uh, that we made regarding the workplace harassment policy. Um, <clears throat> and in there it says, uh, it, it says specifically what needs to be done. And uh, you can read through it, but really uh, at the bottom, it, toward the bottom, it says not only do you have to go through this whole checklist, which wasn't done, but you must refer the written complaint of the complaint to a review panel consisting of five members. And that, that just wasn't done. Didn't happen at now, all. Now, the legislative uh, council has a slightly different one, and that wasn't followed either. I mean, the, the people from le legislative council should have followed that. The legislators that got up and spoke should have followed this one. This was not done at all. Let's bring up the next graphic. Um, further, uh, it says the review panel either shall investigate the complaint as promptly and confidentially as practicable by interviewing the complainant, the accused individual, and any witnesses or coworkers, and by considering the circumstances surrounding the alleged incident or incidents that form the basis of the complaint, or forward the complaint and any record relating to the complaint to an in in independent investigator. Again, not done. Never it's, happened. No. So. Um, that part is very, very concerning. We're gonna, I'm going to pull up the last graphic with regard to workplace harassment. Um, it goes on, the review panel or investigator shall complete the investigation requirements in the checklist um, and include conducting investigation requirements in the checklist for an investigation and preparing findings of fact and recommendations for resolution of the complaint. Again, just... Never happened. None of it. None, none, of, it's, of, it. none of it's done. Okay. So I don't understand how... The, I, I, I'm frustrated. I have friends on both sides, but I don't see how you can deny that we didn't follow our own policy. And we'll get into Mason's manual in the, in the next segment, but uh, other comments that you have in our last uh, half minute here regarding the harassment policy? Only that due process applies not only to statutes, but it also applies to this policy and this this particular policy has due process. And Mason's manual, people are quoting that left and right. The Constitution is superior to all this. You have to have due process no matter what system you're using. And if it has to be fair and it has to result in a fair investigation, normally by somebody neutral, that mm -hmm. didn't happen. Exactly. All right, folks, we're going to be back uh, with another segment with Mr. Lynn Bowie. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. 
Beck Communications is now hiring independent sales agents around the state. We're looking for highly motivated individuals to take advantage of this opportunity, selling advertising for our news and sports programming on Beck TV and sponsorships for the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team. Independent sales agents will make 50% commission on their completed sales for all products. Beck TV is the leader in broadcasting local sports, owner of the Bismarck Bucks indoor football team, and originator of newly launched news opinion programming. Submit your application now at careers at becktel.coop. This is an exciting opportunity you can't pass up. 50% commission for independent sales agents now hiring at Beck Communications. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and as you know, my passion is to help each and every one of you get the best sleep of your life. That's why I created my new Giza Dreams bed sheets. The first night you sleep on my sheets, you'll never want to sleep on anything else. Go to MyPillow.com or call the number on your screen right now to get your very own MyPillow Giza Dream sheets. When you buy one set of sheets, you'll get another set absolutely free. For the best night's sleep in the whole wide world, visit MyPillow.com. Ever been in a cave before? It's our first time. It's all right. Where are you going? Oh. See you at the car! But how will we... The car! Your offer has been accepted. Ever bought a house before? It's our first time. All right. Where are you going? I'll see you at the closing. But how will we... The closing! The experienced professionals at Superior Glass provide residential and commercial glass installation and repair services in Central and Western North Dakota. Superior Glass is your source for stained glass projects, mirrors, windows, touchless, and automated entry solutions. Stop by and see us at 3323 East Broadway in Bismarck or call us at 701-258-5600. Superior Glass, where you get superior service for less. Bye for now. Welcome back. No apologies on Beck, your after hours oasis of sanity. We are still with Mr. Lynn Bowie, attorney for Luke Simons, and we're discussing the case. Uh, we're bemoaning the concerns we, we all share with regard to lack of due process for Mr. Simons, which should be a concern to us all. Um, we've discussed at length, relatively speaking for this show, um, <laughs> the, the, the harassment policy that we have yes. in the legislature. Um, I'd like to bring up uh, another graphic. This is Mason's Manual of Legislative Procedures. So this is something I had found over the weekend before when I was trying to learn about this and make sure, make sure because I didn't even know. We, we didn't know what the resolution was going to be. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be expulsion. And I believe very much it turned out to be expulsion. And it was held off at the end because they were waiting to dis de determine if they had enough votes for expulsion. And they were they were uh, whipping votes over the weekend. The likes of, say, Shannon Roars Jones uh, and others were calling people and saying, you know, you really need to vote for this, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So when I was doing the research, I, 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 it doesn't take that much research, but Section 562, right of legislatures to expel members. So it's very small writing, but I want to point out that we were informed by legislative council during the so-called hearing that we were, in fact, giving Luke his proper due process because it says in Section 562, subsection 2, that the power of the legislature in expulsion is absolute, so long as you have two-thirds vote. And then in subsection 3 of the same section, it says that the House has the power to adopt any procedure and to change it at any time and without notice. So they say, hey, there you go. Subsections 2 and 3, you can do what you want. You don't need to do more for Luke. It's enough. Now flip up the next graphic, please. The problem is, number four, the very next subsection, says that adequate notice, formal charges, and a public hearing with the right to cross-examine witnesses have been held to be necessary components of procedural due process that must be afforded to a member prior to expulsion. This is what I thought was the clincher. I even sent it to leadership, and I said, we can't expel. 
we cannot expel. It's, it's not even an option whether we believe it's the right thing or not because the Constitution allows us that ability to do what we need to do, the state Constitution. And what we ha have in our rules is these are the listed rules. We follow the harassment policy. Anything not in the rules, the rules say follow Mason's rules, which we have. So again, Lynn, where did they go wrong? How, how, how can you misinterpret that? Well, first of all, Mason's is clear, as you show. But I was surprised that they even br brought in Mason's. Because before you get to Mason's, you first look at the Constitution, which is superior to everything. Mm -hmm. And we have a case uh, in North Dakota that makes it clear that even as to the legislature deciding their own process to pass laws, it still must conform with the constitutional requirements. So constitutions first, statutory provisions second, which by the way, there is a statutory provision for an investigation. True. They didn't use that either. Then the policy that they have adopted, which they didn't follow. And then Mason's is kind of like, in my opinion, like Robert's Rules of Order, but that's what they're using instead of that. And the bottom line is, is that's so low on the totem pole mm -hmm. that shouldn't even be a factor. But even the thing they were using shows they violated that. Yes. I mean, how many things can they violate? I mean, Four. the Constitution, <laughs> the statutes, uh, their own policy for the legislature, the policy for the legislative council, and then Masons. Yep. I mean, wow. so this was just ramrodded in without any due process. And then I would like to address very briefly that they say you don't get any due process or that we've provided the due process. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, uh, as I said today at the press conference, and I'll use a legal term of art, balderdash. <laughs> that they absolutely uh, didn't follow any of the rules. They didn't provide any due process, as even their own uh, Masons applies. And, uh, and then they, their claim by the people accusing him, legislative counsel. So they had as their lawyers, the people who are trying to get rid of him, deciding he has no interest or property interest therefore has no due process interest. And again, everything is against them on that. Uh, I was uh, astounded that the, the individual providing the legislature's legal advice is the one that yeah. reached into a dusty drawer, pulled out the file marked Luke, and said, oh, look at all this stuff we have here, and let's use it now against them, yep. instead of following their own policy. Now, there's two possibilities here. The legislative council, every time they had one of these complaints, looked at it, and they're all lawyers, right? Right. And they said, hmm, this isn't enough. This doesn't qualify. Right. And that's why it was left in the dusty drawer, Could perhaps. Mm -hmm. The other possibility is it did qualify, and they didn't bother to use their own rules. Had every one of these been addressed at the time, there would have been an investigation. It would have been handled appropriately, one would hope. And we wouldn't be where we are today. Last thing I'll mention there, at the very end, they say, oh, our, our policies are wrong. We have to worry about confidentiality. No, you don't. Your policies, as you just read a while ago, have right in it. This is how we can protect confidentiality. The reason this blew up is because they didn't follow their own rules. And in the process, we're violating everything that we hold dear as far as uh, process and due process. And liberals, conservatives, anyone who believes in the rule of law should be saying this was wrong. 100%. Pull up the next graphic, our last graphic on this segment. Um, and this, this shows exactly why we needed to have an independent investigation. Um, there's no doubt about it. Pull up the graphic, please. This one is, um, this one is a blog that you have the seen Minute Man before. Blog. Minuteman blog. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so this shows credibility issues linger for Luke Simon's accusers. So here we are already getting into the fray of what's believable, what's not consistent. And we, this wouldn't, we wouldn't be getting into this fray had they done proper process. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate for the alleged victims. It's clearly unfortunate for Luke Simons. It's unfortunate for the constituents of Luke's in District 36 and it's unfortunate for the legislature at whole, it's unfortunate for the state of North Dakota, right. who is now the state that has expelled a legislator with the least amount of due process. Erroneously. The only time I'm aware of that there hasn't been an independent investigation. It's, it's unbelievable, and, and I don't think we've it, seen the last of it. It almost has to be overturned simply for precedent's sake, because if you have a precedent set like this, 
It's wide open. The barn door is open, people. Mm -hmm. Anybody can make an accusation, and you'll be out in eight days. <laughs> yep. So what's, uh, what's next then? What are we looking at with Luke? Well, uh, now that uh, he had a chance to clear his name, which uh, he did today, uh, and, and again, he subjected himself, unlike any of those who accused him, uh, to being questioned about everything. Uh, now that he's had an opportunity to, again, in his, his view, clear his name and allow his side to come out, uh, he will now have uh, basically an opportunity to, one, um, I did some research, I'm looking at this, I'm going to provide him my legal counsel as to um, what I think his options are and what his chances of success are as to the next possible um, place. Obviously, one of the options goes to the state Supreme Court as to this issue. And, uh, and then he needs to talk to his family and decide, do I, do I really want to do this? And this is, I mean, anytime you decide to get involved in any type of lawsuit, I tell all my clients, you know, sit down with your family and make sure this is what you want to do. It's and this is, this is a much more complicated, not in the facts, but all, everything he's going to do is going to be very much in the public yeah. eye. And I think, uh, so again, he, I think he, it, he will be discussing this with his family and I deciding what to do. I think it would be in the best interest of the state, frankly, if something is pursued, because this, this process, the way it played out, can't stand. Lynn, thank you very much for going through this. My pleasure. Um, we're going to have you... Uh, for another segment to discuss an entirely different topic, folks. So right. it's a very interesting one. Stick with us. We'll be right back. Howdy, folks. It's the Caroline Cafe. I reckon it's time you'll do for a hearty meal. So saddle up for the day with one of our hay boss and breakfast yeah. homemade soups. Fill your grill, add a salad bar, sink your teeth into our famous Caroline burger and barbecue ribs. Mm -hmm. Top it off with spur rattle and pie with Comroe that's sure to put a smile on even the toughest outlaws. Yeah. Shake the dirt off the boots each night and warm up with the game. Tell them about it, Stacy. I can't wait to see you at the county line. Since opening in Hebron in 1940, Dakota Community Bank and Trust has been your hometown bank. Our mission has been to provide modern banking convenience with old-fashioned hometown service. We've grown with the communities we serve. Through year-round events, countless sponsorships, and nearly 7,000 hours of volunteering each year. Learn more about our 80-year history at dakotacommunitybank.com. Respect, innovation, trust, and excellence. These core values can be seen in every building built by Straightway Construction. In the community for over 15 years, Straightway Construction has become the premier construction company for commercial projects. From dirt to design and framing to finish, Straightway Construction is your number one choice. You won't have to look far to find a project that has that Straightway touch. Call them today or go online to straightwayconstruction.com and let them make your vision a reality. Jeez, what a mess. Look at that. There's roof stuff everywhere. It's so embarrassing. Ruins the neighborhood. Come on, humans. Let's get this fixed. Don't let your roof go to the dogs. Call America's best contractors for your free estimate. Need a new woof? After checking with the rest, go with the best. America's best contractors. 258-2412. Online at americasbestcontractorsincorporated.com. When you can't find answers to your recurring health challenges, it can feel like your health and your future are being held hostage. The Wellness Way is a network of health restoration clinics that think and act differently to solve the health challenges others can't. Here, we disrupt the standard approach to care through a combination of testing, individual plans, and one-on-one -on -one guidance, putting your health and your future where they belong, in your own hands. All right, we are back. It's no apologies on Beck. We're still with Mr. Lynn Bowie. 
Um, we are now going to speak about a case, two cases actually, Lynn, that I think you were in front of the Supreme Court yesterday, is that right? I was, yeah. Can you tell by, us about them? Yes, by Zoom, by the way. Uh, this one involves the power of the governor to issue executive orders, and that includes everything from the mass to telling a profession, uh, such as my client, a cosmetologist, that you're out of business for a while. And so what occurred is uh, there's a residential uh, uh, facility, apartment complex for people who are retired. They're still able to get around, still able to come and go, play golf, whatever they want to do. Right. And so, uh, but their meals are served. Uh, there's lots of activities they can have. And there's a salon. Oh. And the cosmetologist comes in and uh, will do their hair, all that. Well, once the lockdown occurred and once the pandemic occurred, that entire facility, uh, again, residential, was locked down. Uh, they decided that it was safer for the residents to come in. They did everything they were supposed to do as far as masks, everything, the uh, aides that came in, they all had to be temperatured, the whole bit. Everybody who entered that building, all the employees had been followed all the rules of the health department. The only thing they didn't follow is it was safer, in their opinion, if they're gonna do somebody's hair, and especially these are elderly people, okay. Instead of doing it in their shower, for example, and in their room where they could slip and there's water and all these other things, mm -hmm. they made the decision that it would be safer to do it in the salon. And Which it has is the still chair. In the facility. It's in the facility. Yeah, it's, it is in the facility and it's for their use. And it's a cos licensed cosmetologist. And so the bottom line is, is you have a chair, you can lean back, do the hair, all those type of things. Sure. It was safer to do it that way. They continued doing it. Somebody apparently found out about it. The Minot Police Department shows up. What? Yep. <laughs> and they go no. up and they observe her uh, being a cosmetologist and they issue her a citation, and, which is a criminal charge. And so she got charged. So then the result is, is that uh, the owner uh, of Somerset Court in Minot uh, and sued uh, the governor for what's called a declaratory judgment action, which is real simple. It just says, judge, declare whether or not the governor has the right to uh, basically shut down somebody's profession, uh, in this case a cosmetologist, whether he has even the right to issue any of these orders. And so that went to a, uh, a judge here in Bismarck. And then the criminal case, of course, that occurs where you, you're located, so that's in Ward County. And so uh, the state made a motion to dismiss uh, the civil case. Uh, the uh, uh, state's attorney made a motion to, uh, to uh, dismiss our motion to dismiss or, or to rule against us. And bottom line is we lost both on the district court level. Both judges said we think the governor has the power to do this, we're not, or we're not going to second-guess the governor. One of the judges said point blank. And then we wow. went up to the appeal to the North Dakota Supreme Court. So yesterday we had in the morning, uh, we had the criminal case. And then in the afternoon, we uh, had the uh, civil case. So now the, that is presently before the court, and they will make whatever decision they think is uh, appropriate. Uh, ironically, the Legislative Council had issued a memorandum stating that the governor's powers were absolutely dead wrong. The governor cannot do this for separation of powers. Our statute didn't give him the authority to do this. Uh, and so part of my exhibits, ironically, is the Legislative Council memorandum stating this is, Governor, this is illegal for you to do. Oh, oh interesting. And, and then on this other case, of course, I'm, I, I'm disagreeing with the, with the legislative, legislative council. council. Oh, so, interesting. So, well, a clock is right twice a month, uh, twice a day. <laughs> right. yes. here, so here's my take, and I, because I've, yeah. I have a bill that is, uh, seeks to clarify what the governor views as a gray area, which I don't mm -hmm. see as a gray area in our, in our um, century code, in statute. <clears throat> My take is that it says in Century Code in 37-17.1, uh, military emergency services governor mm -hmm. has the power. The governor can suspend a regulation. And that suspend. Suspend. So uh, if, if you have to have certain credentials to be a teacher or a truck driver, you're limited to certain hours, you can't drive here, you can't. He can suspend all of these regulations. A bar has to close by 2 a.m. according to state law. He could suspend that and allow the bar to stay open all night but nothing gives him the power to make regulation, in, eff in effect, to have a, a faux or fiat legislation. And what, what boggles my mind is in Century Code that there is a place carved out for in, in, a, in a, uh, a health emergency for businesses to be closed. 
but it has to be by the health officer. That's and the correct. health officer must go before the district judge and make the case of why this business or these businesses need to be closed. So there's a way to do it. Oh, yeah. Nothing gives the governor the power to do that. So I'm flabbergasted. I mean, I don't, I'm not flabbergasted that the governor <laughs> did it. He's gonna, he's gonna do whatever the heck he wants. He's you know, a technocrat, autocrat, you know, I'm, I'm the boss, CEO guy. It blows my mind that you took it to a judge and the judge said, hey, it's all cool. Based on what? Based on what statute? Tell me, Lynn. Well, I'll let you go and read the uh, opinion, but the judge literally said, I'm not gonna second guess the governor. And if the Supreme wow. Court, and if the, and, and by the way, I'll tell you that that opinion that was written by that judge was very well written. Um, he, he applied the, the law and he saw it differently than I did. And it was uh, uh, indeed a, a, a superbly written opinion. I just felt that, um, that it was incorrect in, in, his, in the final decision. Well, spoken uh, and, like someone who is going to have to go before the judge again. <laughs> again and again. So I'll well, see that opinion because I don't think I'm going to be uh, so uh, gracious. But, but anyway, but the, the bottom line is, 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 is you're correct. It, and it, the legislation and the statute is clear. Uh, that he cannot legislate. He does not turn into the state health officer or the county health officer. Or the king. Uh, or, or the king, <laughs> or other words you may want to use. Uh, and so the bottom line is, is that uh, he, had, he had no authority, in our opinion, to do that. And it will be very interesting to see what the Supreme Court does. Fingers so crossed. interesting. This has just been fantastic having you here today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Yes. Very instructive. We are so appreciative that you came in today. Yes, it was my pleasure. Thanks, Thanks Lynn. So much. much appreciated. Right. Folks, we are going to be back with a little bit, well, actually, a whole That's ton awesome. of mailbag. We're going to be... <laughs> Just chomping through it. Stick with us. We're going to be back. There's nothing more important than family. And at Prairie Rose Family Dentists, we get it. That's why we have more locations, more dentists, specialists, extended hours, pediatric clinics, and even emergency appointments. So you can always be seen. Book your appointment today at prairierosedentist.com. Prairie Rose Family Dentists. We are family. Deciding how to promote your business can be hard. Visit the professionals at Dakota Promotions and Printing and let them help you through your struggle. Dakota Promotions provides promotional items and apparel from corporate gifts to team shirts and everything in between. With quick turnaround times and friendly service, they are your best choice. And best yet, you're shopping local. Visit them online at dakotapromo.com or stop in their showroom at 320 West Main in Mandan. Dakota Promotions, delivering promotions just for you. Hi, I'm Dennis Haugen, along with my sons Andy and Mike, and we're showing our support for wind energy in North Dakota. Wind energy has provided farmers like us with a steady stream of income that's not tied to the weather, like crops and cattle are. Another bonus is that wind farm owners are required to maintain the roads leading up to the turbines. Because of that, oftentimes, these roads are the best in the county. Wind energy is good for landowners, it's good for the land, it's good for our economy, and it's good for North Dakota. 40 years ago, Aero Service Team started with one truck and lots of hard work. Times may have changed, but the hard work that we've put in to get your lives back in order after fire, water, and disaster hasn't. Over the years, we've seen so many families lose their belongings due to water and fire damage. Restoring homes back to the original state has made every hour of hard work well worth it. Thank you for trusting our family with yours. When disaster strikes, you only have to make one call. Aero Service Team does it all. It's every American's right to bear arms. At Mandan Sporting Goods, we're here to help you support your Second Amendment rights, which reads, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Whether you're looking for a pistol for personal defense or collector gun, we have the staff to help you. We also have the area's largest inventory of ammo and reloading supplies. Mandan Sporting Goods, the area's local gun and ammo specialists. Now is the best time to plan for your 2021 farm equipment needs. North Dakota-based Summers Manufacturing is currently offering early order savings. Take advantage of big savings on North America's broadest tillage line, including the Super Colter Samurai and the innovative BRT Renegade, as well as the best-built, best-backed land rollers in the industry. Talk to your Summers dealer today or go to summersmfg.com to learn more about early order savings available on all Summers equipment.
Welcome, welcome, welcome back to No Apologies on Beck. Lori and I decided to stay for segment five. <laughs> yeah, um, and we're gonna we're going to <laughs> with the mailbag. I mean, it was yeah, there was a lot. There was a lot. It was good. It's all good. We I'm very happy about it. Let's start right off the bat here. This very first one. This is only 20 seconds. It says of a long heated debate between Rick Becker and. Joel Heidkamp that covers the expulsion of Luke Simons, ethics commissions, the media, the Me Too movement, and the Bastia caucus. Watch the entire debate tonight. I know, so it was a little promo for right before we, and it was only a 20 second, but boy, oh boy, did we get the, the comments on some of these things too. Uh, the first one says, of course, wow, Joel is so wrong. People who watched the whole charade knew that those who were pointing out that they were not following the rule of law were not defending anyone or saying that they, the accusers were wrong. It was purely out about reminding everyone that there is a process that must be adhered to. You just heard that with Lynn Bowie a little while yep. ago, too. He knew exactly the point Rick was trying to make. It's the usual attempt to distract by appealing to feelings and victimizing. Fabulous That's comments. True. So good comments. Attempt to distract by appealing to feelings and victimizing. Absolutely. A hundred percent. That is succinctly stated. Okay. All right. Next graphic. Uh, it says, once Scraw got up and mentioned the email that was received, admitting certain allegations against Simons were false, that meeting you were all in should have been halted and an investigation into the info in, in that email should have been demanded. Um, and then, yeah, there's some strong language. You know, <laughs> Joel, don't feel bad. A lot of people say that I make them want to puke, so it's <laughs> nothing, nothing personal. Well, um, he's a liberal, so. Yeah. Okay, so um, on the next topic here, <laughs> uh, this one was huge. I think we had at least over a hundred and some responses to just this one little sentence, and it makes me really proud of the viewers because people had a lot of really great responses to this single question. Do you agree with the decision to expel Luke Simon? Yes, yes, yes. Hearsay and accusations aren't evidence. Even private companies have investigations into what happened prior to firing people. Our house failed to do that basic required task. 100%. That was very true. Yeah. No, and hell no. It was a witch hunt. They did not want due process because they knew there was no basis for the allegations. All hype and exaggeration? Not at all. If that was justice, I don't want these people making laws. Ooh, that's a good oh. comment. These are so good. <laughs> no, where is Lady Justice? Right? And I was shocked. I was shocked. Republicans, question mark. Yep. Uh, I'm a 50-year Republican who votes straight R, but I'm done with voting Republican under the current leadership. Let his constituents determine his legislative status at the end, at the next election. You know, and that's true. Fair. It's totally that's fair. True. And very, very good. On this next page, agreed. I cannot believe that the majority of these folks have even read the Republican or R platform. They certainly aren't influenced by it. The Dems plus Rhinos equals majority in both houses and executive branch. Disgusted. You need to be corrected. They are rhinos, says the next person. Awfully hard to make an informed judgment call when evidence is suppressed and the jury has rendered its decision before the trial began. That's that true. was the kind of blank show I expect from the mean girls in junior high. I thought the same thing, viewer. I thought the same exact You know what? I, I really like this one, too, because uh, it is what you'd expect to see from the mean girls in junior high. Yep. And the jury had rendered its decision before the so supposed trial began. It, they had. The yep. votes were counted. And the votes the were the last in. sentence is perfect, too. Frankly, it was an embarrassment to watch. I felt the same way watching it, too. Like, like what is happening here? Why are they not getting it? Uh, and so disappointing, the next person says, when they failed to heed the words of Representative Paulson, they brought a black cloud onto the floor that will never be lifted. Well, these are so good. And then on the other side, of course, you've got a lot of absolutely nots and no, um, no, we voted for Luke and stand with Luke. And that is the theme I'm getting a lot from District 36. I know that he won his election by over like 4,000 votes. It was not close. He is very well liked in District 36, yep. for those of you who do not know. Absolutely not. The North Dakota House of Representatives should be embarrassed of themselves, although it sounds as he may deserve it, not without due process. This is not D.C. with a bunch of commie Democrats. So, all right. I, like, so these are fantastic. These are, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm very proud of the people in North Dakota. I think we're very intelligent, and I'm going to bring that up later, too. But I do, I do think people are really smart. Um, due process, you're entitled to that. No citizens of North Dakota. If the legislature can suspend rules and, quote, convict an individual without due process, what makes you think they will stop there? Great. That's very true. These are so good. 
Yep. Um, not without investigation, not without due process, no way. I don't know the man personally, but I like how he votes. <laughs> Let's go to the next one. We've got so many. So many. Now without a fair trial, of course. I believe in due process. Do not agree with uh, what he allegedly did. However, we are presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. I feel the House made a very big legal mistake today. Uh, he had been, had he been found guilty in the court of law with evidence presented efficiently, then the House expelled him, then fine. But this vote is going to be a crap storm for our legislative body. Now that's absolutely true. These are so good. I, I like the, wow, what the heck is going on? That was kind of my attitude about the whole thing, too. These are so good. Absolutely not. I'm looking on the other side. Mr. Becker, the Me Too frauds will likely be after you next. Oh, they're watching. They're waiting. They're, they're hoping. <laughs> I, give them, I give them enough, but I always give, make sure I'm a little protected, too. Um, the last one says, absolutely not. The complaints are about things that are definitely not harassment, and they are from all the way back to 2017, and if they weren't important then, why are are they relevant all of a sudden? These are just fantastic, wow. too. Wow, go to the next graphic. We'll pick one out of <laughs> so these. And, many. I know, right? They're so good. All right. Uh, how about this one? Not the way it was done, no matter how much of a zero tolerance there is for workplace policy. This is not a workplace employee. This is an elected representative, and we, the people, deserve due process. If found guilty, then so be it, but this was a sellout of American justice and values. Yep. Um, it, there's, there's an interesting one here that the... Uh, uh, about uh, Representative Simon's call regarding a work matter. I mean, very. these are just great comments. Let's flip to the next screen. Again, you see here, a um, lot, of, lot of no's. And uh, <laughs> I know, it just goes on, so... and on Anyway, thank you, all of you. Next one. All of you. These are so good. Okay, this, next is, a, one. this is a totally different topic this time, but we're going to. Next gonna, one. I know. There's like, we have so many next great one. comments. I love this. Anyway. All right, we made it, we made it, holy crap, Jesus, Martha Quinn. All right, Quinn. join us tomorrow because we will be uh, talking about Biden and free speech on campus and maybe go over the executive order that we were going to do today, but didn't. So we'll see you next time.